حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him and we seek help from him We seek forgiveness from him We repent to him And we seek refuge in him From our own evils and our own bad deeds Anyone who is guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indeed guided. And anyone who has been left astray will find no one to guide him. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, the only one without any partner. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Today's khutbah is about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the just. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most fair and just of all people. He was fair to all and all people were treated alike by him. Muslims or non-Muslims, friends or foes, relatives or strangers. This quality of fairness um, had always been freely demonstrated by him. Even before he received the call of prophethood, his fairness and integrity even in his youth was well known to all people of Mecca and the people would often bring their disputes to him to the site. When he came to Medina, all the people including unbelievers and the Jews accepted him as their arbitrator in all their disputes. In spite of the malice and animosity of the Jews against the Prophet and his faith, they often brought to the Prophet both their own disputes and disputes between themselves and the Muslims. Once a case between a Jew and a Muslim was brought before him, and after hearing uh, the evidence, he decreed in the favor of the Jew, without caring about the reaction of his tribe, for they could have become hostile to Islam. He was the true embodiment of the commandments of the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين لله شهداء بالقسط ولا يجرمنكم شنآن قوم على ألا تعدلوا أعدلوا هو أقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون مين؟ All who believe stand out firmly for Allah as witness to fair dealings and let not the hatred and enmity of others make you swerve to wrong 
and depart from justice. Be just, that is next to piety and fear Allah. He did not even discriminate between a near relative and a stranger. In these matters, if the stranger was in uh, the right, he decreed against his relative and in favor of the stranger. Once a noble woman of the Quraysh committed theft and her relatives tried to intercede on her behalf. The Prophet وسلم, called the people and addressed them in these words. What destroyed your predecessors was just that when a person of rank among them committed a theft or any crime, they left him alone. But when a weak one of their number committed a theft or any crime, they inflicted the prescribed punishment on him. I swear by Allah that if Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, should steal, I would have her hand cut off. That's narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. This strict fairness of the Prophet وسلم, in matters of disputes and crimes was in line with the commandments of the Quran, not to distinguish between relatives and strangers in the matter of justice. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhu al-ladhina amanu, kunu qawwamina bil-qist, shuhada'a lillahi wa law ala anfusikum, aw al-walidayn aw al-aqrabin, in yakun ghaniyan aw faqiran, fallahu awla bihuma, fala tattabu al-hawa an ta'adilu, وَإِنْ تَلُوا أَوْ تَعْرُضُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرًا means whenever you speak speak justly and fairly even if a near relative is concerned and fulfill the covenant of Allah thus does Allah command you that you may remember and he. And again in Surah An Nisa, we read, O you who believe, stand out firmly for justice as witness to Allah, even against yourselves or your parents or your near relatives. And whether it's against rich or poor, for Allah can best protect both. Follow not the lusts of your hearts least you serve from doing justice. And if you distort justice or decline to do justice, surely Allah is well acquainted with all that you do. Justice and fair conduct attained its perfection at the hands of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And rightly so, because he was the last of the messengers of Allah on earth. If he would not offer fair and just treatment to people and would not decide people's disputes with absolute justice and fairness, then who could be expected to follow him? He had to establish the rule of justice and fair play in this world so that people could live in peace and tranquility. In fact, it is the maintenance of justice and balance in human affairs and disputes that keeps peace in the heavens and the earth. The Prophet ﷺ firmly established the rule of justice among his people by his own example and practice. When he was on his deathbed, just a few moments before he breathed his last breath, he had it publicly announced. Is there anyone among you whom I have striken? Here is my back, let him strike me in return. Is there anyone whose character I have defamed or insulted? Let him now cast reproach upon me. Is there anyone from whom I have taken anything unjustly? 
let him now come forward and be in the Humayr. Upon this, a man among the crowd reminded the Prophet of a debt of three dinars of silver. He was instantly paid that sum. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then said, much easier is it to bear punishment in this world than throughout eternity. Such was his consciousness and understanding of the rights of other people and of the need to dispense them with absolute fairness and justice that he did not forget it even at the last time of his last breath. This is an ever-living reminder to the Muslims of the great importance of fairness and justice. It is an obligation of the Muslims first to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who give them a perfect code of law concerning the determining of the rights of the people with full justice and second to the Prophet, who by his strict adherence to the rule of law, firmly established this principle among them and warned them never to relax its enforcement. Even his enemies and critics testify to his fair and just treatment to all. In his private dealings, he was just, he treated friends and strangers, the rich and the poor, the powerful and the weak, with equity, and he was beloved by the common people for the affability with which he received them and listened to their complaints. In the words of his bitterest critic, Sir William Moore, in the exercise at home of a power absolutely dictatorial, Muhammad was just and temperate. Undoubtedly, he was a very fair and just man and succeeded not only in establishing a very high standard of justice, but also in setting a code of law which helped to establish and strengthen the role of law in a country wherein before there had been neither any rule of law nor any respect for law or justice. He so firmly established a system of justice in the country and so firmly and deeply engraved it in the hearts of his people that they truly became the messengers of justice for the oppressed and downtrodden people of the world. Their quality of fairness and goodness is mentioned by the Quran in this words, which means you are the best of people raised for mankind, enjoining what's right and fair, forbidding what's wrong, and believing in Allah. The standard of the Prophet's concept of justice was so exalted that he could not tolerate any kind of discrimination between man and man on the basis of color, creed, race, nationality, language, birth, or status. When it came to judging disputes between them, it was a universal code of law which outstripped the barriers of time and space and applied equally to all races and all nations. With the passage of time, this code of law was embraced by all the people of the world through apparently without recognizing its source. However, all the credit must go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was so fair and impartial in practice that his standard of justice eventually became acceptable to all mankind. In fact, the concept of the rule of law in its new dimensions 
and presented by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had never been known to men before him. It was he who actually established the practice of the rule of law in the country by his own example. He taught by his teaching and practiced that in the sight of the law all were equal. No matter what their status in society, all were the progeny of Adam who was created of dust and therefore they were all equal in honor and human rights and no one could claim superiority over others in this respect. The Quran laid the fundamental basis of human honor and status in this world means O mankind we created you from a single pair of a male and a female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know each other not that you may despise each other surely the most honored of you is the sight in the sight of Allah is he who is the most righteous of you this Quranic injunction paved the way for the final perfection of the Islamic code of law which knows no discrimination between people on any count in the matter of their legal rights and according to which all are treated alike with justice and fairness. Even the messenger was not exempt from the application of the rule of law in Islam as he himself proved by inviting anyone to take revenge on him just a few moments before his death, as explained before. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم أدعو الله عسى أن تكون هذه ساعة إجابة سبليكيت من الله سبتا أو سبليكيت من الله سبتا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the judge 
as long as he is not tyrannical. But when he is tyrannical, Allah departs from him and the devil, the shaitan, attached himself to him. Narrated by Tirmidhi ibn Majah. The seriousness of the function of the judge and the wrongness of submitting false evidence is shown by the following hadith. It is reported that two men brought a dispute before the Prophet ﷺ about inheritance. But neither of them had any proof beyond their claim. The Prophet ﷺ, while giving judgment in this case said, if I give you a judgment in a favor of one respecting what is rightly his brother's, I am allotting him only a portion of a hill. Thereupon both of the persons said, Messenger of Allah, this right of mine may go to my brother. But he replied, no, brother go and divide it up, aiming at what is right, then draw lots and let each of you consider the other to have what is legitimately his. In another version, he said, I judge between you only by my opinion regarding matters about what no revelations has been sent down to me. I am only a human being, and you bring your disputes to me. Some perhaps may more eloquent in their argument than others, so that I may give judgment on their behalf according to what I hear from them. Therefore, whatever I decide for anyone which by right belongs to his brother, he must not take it, for I am granting him only a portion of hell. Narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. The Quran refers to bringing false evidence before the judge uh, in these words. Means, do not usurp one another property by unjust means, nor offer it to the judges, so that you may devour knowingly and unjustly a portion of the goods of others. In Surah Al-Baqarah, we read what means, as for those who sell the faith, they owe to Allah and their own pledged words for small price. They shall have no portion in the hereafter. It was by means of these severe restrictions and warnings of the Quran regarding false evidence and bribery and the very clear, fair and just treatment of the Prophet that the people came to respect the law of Islam. His kind and compassionate conduct toward the people helped in their better understanding and acceptance of the basic code of law. Thus gradually this law of justice of the Quran gained a firm and a strong footing in Islamic society and then in the course of time was adopted by other nations and people. And now it has become a distinguishing mark of a cultured and civilized society. It is reported that one of the Ansari was killed at Khaybar. His relatives went to the Prophet who asked them to produce witness to testify to who the murders were as they could not bring witness, nor did they accept the offer of the Prophet ﷺ that the Jews would take an oath, Allah's Messenger paid his blood money to the relatives of the deceased, narrated by Abu Dawood. Once a man killed an Ansari, the relatives of the killed Ansari demanded from the Prophet that the son of the murderer be given to them in return. The Prophet ﷺ refused, saying, A son is not guilty of the crime of his father. It was customary with the Prophet ﷺ to judge each case according to the law of the complaints religion. Once a Christian was killed by a Christian, he therefore enforced the law of the Bible, a life for a life. The chief of a tribe of Taif had unlawfully detained a woman 
her nephew, Mawira, an unbeliever, complained to the Prophet about the unlawful detention of his aunt. The Prophet immediately ordered the chief to hand back Mawira's aunt to him. The Prophet وسلم, always decided each case on the basis of the evidence, or in the absence of evidence, the parties were asked to take an oath. Then he gave his judgment according to the commandments of Allah in that respect. اللهم اصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو اصل امرنا واصلح لنا ديننا التي فيها معاشنا واصلح لنا اخوتنا التي اليها معادنا واجعل الحياه زياده لنا من كل خير والموت راحه لنا من كل شر اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا اكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا وبلغنا مما يرضيك آملنا واختم بالباقيات الصالحات أعمالنا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا وإمامنا وقدوتنا وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وأقول الصلاة